Facebook's automated tools are leaving some locked out advertisers with no real help. And once they've lost access, there's no way to stop ads from running and the bills from rising. Here to discuss is Bloomberg News tech reporter who covers social media, Kurt Wagner, live from San Francisco. Hey, Kurt, it's great to have you back on Quick Take. You just published an article on this. I just want to take a big step back here and talk about how small businesses advertise on Facebook. How do they do it? Sure. Well, this is a really important part of, of Facebook's overall business. You know, it talks about having 10 million advertisers, and the vast majority of those are small businesses. And what makes Facebook so valuable to them is that they have this very granular ability to target people, right? I mean, that's that's Facebook's whole business model. If you're a small business and, and you might have a limited budget, you don't want to spend it on, uh, you know, spamming a whole bunch of people with an ad. You want to get the exact customer that you're looking for, maybe someone in a certain market or someone with a certain interest. And so they really use Facebook in a, in a granular way because they just don't have the money to afford, uh, you know, the, the TV style ads that you might see from a bigger brand. Right. And this is Facebook's value proposition. That's what's turned it into, at this point, almost a $1 trillion company. The problem, though, as you highlight in your piece, is where these marketers go if they run into an issue, such as an administrator of one of these marketing campaigns getting locked out. Lay it out for us and what you found. Well, you're probably familiar if you followed Facebook with the fact that they are struggling or have struggled historically with trying to clean up its service, right? And so <laughs> yeah. with billions, the understatement of the year, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. With billions of users, what they've, you know, kind of leaned into is using automated systems, basically artificial intelligence software to police the service, right? That's the only way they can really do it at the scale that they're at. But unfortunately, as those systems, you know, get wider and they start to take down more stuff, they do catch kind of innocent or rule following users in that net. And so if you're an advertiser and your account, for example, gets flagged for spam for some reason, perhaps it's it's accidental. The problem is, is that it means that you're kicked out of your account. You can't access your ads, which is, you know, how you run your business. And Facebook is so big, there's not really a good way for anyone to get those issues resolved. There's no human customer service hmm. uh, for most advertisers. So really, you're just kind of kicked out and you're left staring at an automated message from Facebook without any real recourse. And as you highlight, sometimes you're still getting charged, even though you're not able to access and make changes to uh, to that ad campaign. What did Facebook say when when you reached out to them? Well, Facebook issued a statement when I told them about the story. Um, they, you know, admitted, hey, these systems aren't perfect. They actually apologized, which I, which I was kind of surprised about. Hmm. Um, but really, I think the distinction here is that if you are, say, um, an admin for your business's Facebook page and you're running ads, if your account is fully suspended, the ads will stop, right? But what's happening here is that a lot of these accounts are not fully suspended. They're simply kind of kicked out, right? They're saying, hey, we're going to put you in a timeout until we make sure that you are who you say you are. The ads continue to run while that's going on. And unfortunately, the systems aren't really working well enough for people to get back into their account. So they're kind of in this weird limbo, right? They're not fully suspended, um, but they also can't access their account. And meanwhile, the ads that they have set up are running without anybody overseeing them. And, and these these small businesses, Kurt, they find themselves, I would imagine, in a sticky situation. Because as you mentioned at the beginning of our, our conversation, they need Facebook. Because for them, it's the most efficient way for them to get their message out there. Um, does that de-incentivize? I hate to use that term, but does it take away some incentive for Facebook to act quickly? Because... With, with Google and Facebook, those are the only two games in town? I think that Facebook is definitely at an advantage here in that because there's not a ton of other places to go, they can get away with this kind of thing. Now, I don't think necessarily that, that Facebook uh, you know, sales managers who are sitting there saying, oh, I'm going to ignore these, these paying advertisers simply because we can. But I do think that, you know, if there were more options for people to go to, it would elevate this problem internally, right? Like if they knew that every time someone has a bad experience that they might go somewhere else, obviously this is going to be a higher priority for them, which I don't think that it has been. So yes, I think that Facebook benefits tremendously from the fact that they're, they're kind of the only game in town 
and so many small advertisers are are truly dependent on them that that they know that they can get away with this a little bit, um, whereas some other companies might not be able to. Bloomberg News tech reporter Kurt Wagner live in San Francisco. Kurt, always great to have you on Quick Take. Thanks as always for taking your time. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.